Today we'll be looking into one of England's biggest clubs, the sleeping giant of the Premier League, Newcastle United, who is known in these parts the Toon. The iconic black and white stripes done by many over the decades and all worshipped by the supporters, some of the most fanatical in the land. The club was founded in 1892 after a merge between Newcastle East and West from Newcastle United. We spoke to Joe Allen. My first goal in the number nine shirt, you know, be, if, if my career had stopped then, it would have been enough for me, um, it was the highlight of my career, uh, to score on that number nine shirt because it's the iconic shirt. You know, it's worn by Milburn, MacDonald, Colt, Shearer, numerous ones that, I mean, that I've missed out, but um, to score as, as well in front of the team that you love and you support, and it doesn't get any better than that. St James's Park. The sixth largest football stadium in the United Kingdom, smack bang in the heart of Newcastle, the focal point across the city, standing tall and proud in all of its glory. Steve Wraith shared this view on Mike Ashley and the club at present. I'm disappointed with the way Mike Ashley and, and you know Derek Lambias before he left were running Newcastle United. I think for me, um, it's hard for a football supporter who's gone through an era of, you know, the Halls and the Shepherds and um, you know the signings such as Alan Shearer. Uh, to suddenly accept that we're now not going to be competing at the top table of football, we're not going to be competing on a regular basis for Champions League football, uh, and we can't compete in the transfer market because what owner doesn't want to spend that kind of money? Um, I would probably say I've mellowed a little bit towards Mike Ashley in the sense that I'm, I'm beginning to understand what he's all about. I didn't understand him at first. Um, he, he hit the ground running at the club with uh, um, you know trips down the big market, buying people pints, wearing the replica shirt. And all of that really came to an end when uh, you know, he stood on the, the terraces at, at the Emirates and, and downed a pint in, in record time. And the media turned against him and, and then the fans you know, basically were led up the garden path a little bit by the media. That, that, you know, people started to attack him for, for bringing the club, the club into disrepute by you know, a chairman doing something or an owner doing something as, as silly as that. And it's been a downward spiral since then. There was obviously problems in the dressing room, um, which he tried to alleviate by bringing in Kevin Keegan which to me was a, was a great move um, had he let Kevin do the job that he'd done previously um, and, and obviously it backfired on him because ultimately Mike Ashley didn't like the way Kevin Keegan ran the football club and, and didn't do as he was told basically and you know he ended up getting rid of Kevin Keegan and, and, and that was sacrilege really to a lot of supporters especially my age who are old enough to remember Kevin Keegan not only as a manager but as, as a player as well. Uh, he's never really recovered from that, you know. Uh, the club obviously went to court with Kevin, and they were proved um, to have lied to the to the public. They were proved to have lied in court, and and that ultimately meant that you know Kevin Keegan was paid off and and, and vindicated. And, and for us as supporters, I think that was our biggest low because then it led to the subsequent relegation. They are relegated after a one 0 defeat at Aston Villa in the cruelest of ways. Whatever fans may argue, there has been success under Mike Ashley. And as Neil Cameron explained, with a little bit more ambition, the club could be back on the rise. For Newcastle United to put a good team in the park every week, you know, to be nowhere, nowhere near the relegation zone, nowhere near it, to be where Newcastle should be, you know, top eight club, we're pushing for a Champions League place, which is getting more difficult. I mean, using Everton as a good template, because I think they're a well-run club. You know, you, you can go in and get, you, you can spend five million, six million, ten million pounds. There are bargains out there, there are, there are people to go for. They just seem very hesitant to do it. And then you, your guess is as good as mine whether that's a deliberate thing or whether it's just bad management. Did I think it was ever going to happen? The honest answer is I don't know. I mean, I, I'm guessing as they did go for another couple of people and it just didn't happen, whether that's the fault of Newcastle's, fault of Joe Kinnear's or whether it was a bit of smoke and mirrors and it, you know, they were never really going to happen. They're a hell of a club for going for people who are just about to go to a big German club for £10 million and you sort of know, you know, that they, they weren't probably going to get them, but they can announce it anyway because they let it slip anyway, so everyone knows that they're at least busy enough. I think they will do something in January. I don't think they've got a, a choice, really. Um, but again, I go back to the point, it's not as if you need to spend, I mean, you, you'll need to spend £150 million to win a league, but Newcastle aren't going to do that. Times have changed, but it's not all been bad. Newcastle finished fifth two seasons ago and brought European Knights back to St James's Park, while the squad that got them there is still the same, minus the sale of Demba Barr and Johan Kabai, who the club would argue they have adequately replaced with like Remy along with other successful buys. But as of yet, they haven't replaced Johan. 